Good evening, dear viewer. My name is Daniel Friedman, and I would like to analyze for you the game of the day nine from the Grand Chess Tour Croatia between Magnus Carlsen and Levon Arenan. Magnus Carlsen is really good in form uh, this year and this tournament especially. He won the last two rounds with black pieces against uh, very strong players, uh, Jan Nepomnesi and Dingleren. And uh, I'm sure he will try with White against Levan Aronian uh, to win another game. Okay, let's start with an analysis. Magnus starts with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3. And um, during the analysis, of, uh, during the live commentary, I was expecting one of the two following opponents, uh, bishop before a Gozen variation or d takes c4 Vienna variation. Uh, Levon chose to play bishop before, but after bishop g5, uh, he took on d c4. And, and other option here is to play h6, which followed to. Uh, which uh, leads to different positions, of course. But let's see what happened in the game. So after dc4, e4, we coming back to the Wiener game, and after c5, uh, Magnus already played many game against Wiener, on a high level, of course, but uh, already this year he showed some interesting ideas. One of them was, uh, Bishop c4, cd4, knight d4, take on c3, take queen f5, and knight d2 against Levon Aranian. He won. Or in this position, knight b5, knight e4, and queen d4, and the rare move, uh, short castle, take a6 against Visha Anand, which ended up a draw. Also, in this tournament already, he uh, showed another idea against uh, Vishy Anand. Got very good position, but um, didn't manage to win. So, let's see what he will show us this time. e5. Not a very popular move. Um, as, uh, this move seems to be not very dangerous for white. At least, it was known before this game. So he take on d4, knight takes d4, bishop c3, b takes c3, and now queen f5, this is idea, uh, helps black to unpin themselves from, from this one, because this bishop is hanging on g5. Now otherwise, uh, black have problems in the position. So e takes f6, queen takes g5, Pawn takes g7, queen takes g7. Now, taking on c4, it's not so good because after queen g2, and white have real problems with um, to connect the rooks, and black just took the pawn for nothing. So that's why white playing queen d2 in this position. Short castle. Now bishop c4. Now queen g2 is of course very dangerous after long castle. Rook g1 is threatening and uh, basically black can resign, so rook d8 instead, threatening e5, win the piece, white plays queen e3, queen g2 is the same situation, it's too dangerous after long castle, rook comes to g1 and it will be a huge trouble on the g-line. So bishop d7, it's a normal move, and here all games was played with short castle. And the game were following like this, knight c6, knight f3, knight f7, knight e5, knight g6, f4, rook c8, bishop e2, rook c6, g3, rook d5. Of course, all of those are not the only moves. Um, there are many other possibilities for both sides, but basically it's nothing special in this position, and the position is equal. Playable, but equal. Also, the 
really rare move i think it was played just once h4 will lead to the variation which i will show you later um during the analysis so but magnus carlson the novelty here he showed long castle very interesting move first of all it looks a little bit scary for white because um, black starts with logical moves knight to c6 rook rook to c8 and starts to push on the c line uh, but of course magnus analyzed this position closely i'm sure maybe as a part of the preparation for the world championship against um, uh, Fabiano Caruana, maybe he just analyzed these lines because uh, he showed already many interesting ideas in Vienna and this is just another one of them. So, castle, knight c6. Now, during the live commentary, I was thinking about move h4 with the idea to bring the rook immediately to g3, uh, trying to attack a king or win a queen even. I think the problem with this move is that after queen e5, uh, the, black, the white cannot really escape the queen straight. For instance, if you play queen h6, I will go back to g7. And not so clear what, what to do. And after exchanging queens, I think the position was completely equal. Uh, so Magnus plays a prophylactical move, bishop b3. For instance, after exchange on e5, the bishop is not hanging anymore. After rook c8, bishop is not hanging anymore. Just useful move on waiting what, what is black doing. Um, let's say black tries in this position the same as after h4 and plays queen e5. Now there are several possibilities. Um, one looks really interesting, queen g3 check just trading the queens but um, opening the h line so the white will get some extra ideas do doubling on the h line pressing against h7 but i think with uh, exact play black can equalize the position let's say queen takes g3 h takes g3 rook c8 knight e2 it's always better for white to keep the knights on board i think in this end game position because otherwise it's easy to develop for black i will put my bishop on c6 and start trading rooks on the d line and um, this small structure weaknesses will, will be not sufficient uh, for y to get some advantage so knight e2 knight e7 g4 and now knight bishop b5 attacking the knight on e2 and uh, if knight goes away then c3 is hanging so white may, white may be forced to trade one pair of rooks which is good for black and i think black equalizes in this position uh, another idea is to play queen h6 and after queen g7 not play play queen h4 of course not queen h3 which loses after e5 knight f5 queen g5 check and uh, white lose a piece on f5 but queen h4 is quite interesting after which um, very unclear position can arise of course all of these variations are not necessary that's not the only moves and so many possibilities uh, not possible to exploit all of them in such a short time but as a bar as um, example i will show you one variation let's say in knight e5 this is actually typical for this variation to put knight on g6 uh, just closing the g line rook e1 knight g6 queen g5 h uh, rook c8 king b2 h6 this queen f6 sacrificing the pawn and then b5 and this position seems to be completely unclear so white is a pawn up but the queen is a little bit outside the game so f2 is hanging it's not so clear how to protect this pawn so easily so knight will come later i think this position is about equal uh, but unclear but maybe the best objectively the best way after um, after queen e5 here is just to take on e5 take and play rook e1 
knight c6 and then uh, again keep the knights on board with knight c2 later maybe trying to move knight to d6 or something like this and just after rook e8 rook c8 play f4 taking space advantage of the king's side i think uh, white have some pressure in this position maybe it's not a big advantage but still very good playable and pleasant position for white so Levin decided to play bishop e8 just to open d line now he's threatening to start exchanging pieces on d4 White takes on c6 with queen on boards. Maybe it's not so wise to keep the knights because uh, it can happen that the white king will be even weaker than the black king. Take, take, and now h4 with a straightforward idea of playing uh, rook h3, rook g3, winning the queen and just starting the attack. Queen f6, normal move. Levin going. Uh, out of the way of this rook g3 stuff, rook h3 and now I think it's one of the critical okay this is maybe not the critical position but it starts to become critical so Levon decided to play b5 which is maybe not the best move it's a good move but um, the computer suggests to play king f8 uh, Rook g3 and then just take on d1, bishop takes the one, rook d8 again, queen c5 check. Now of course not queen e7 because after rook g8, king g8, white wins a queen and the game. But queen e8, not, not being afraid of rook g8 check, king d7, square d4 is under control so black will lose nothing. So rook takes d8. Uh, King takes the 8, a7 is not really hanging because c3 is hanging and h4 as well. So let's say g3, h6, h5, and a6. It seems to me that white is slightly better in this end game, but it will be not enough to win the game. So black have one weakness here, maybe some ideas just pushing the pawns but I don't think this is sufficient in this position so um, b5 was played the idea is straightforward to play before um, the problem of the moves like king f8 there's nothing concrete so black is just playing and I think this position was unknown for Levin and he decided to force white to do something because before is a real threat opening this diagonal and uh, so he forces white to do something against this so it came rook g3 checking h8 this time because okay king f8 is not working because of queen c5 check this time and uh, rook g4 so Magnus cannot bring his rook to the f line to f3 because he, this is under control with the bishop on c6. So he wants to do it this way. He brings rook on the fourth rank uh, and the rook starts really multitasking. So controlling this b4 breakthrough, threatening to play rook f4, push the queen from a really good defensive position uh, on f6 and maybe at some moment playing rook d4 taking control of the d-line so black plays a5 trying to push this before move anyway to open diagonal to play queen a1 check starting attack rook f4 queen g7 i think it's the only move uh, now rook takes d8 rook takes d8 and g4 uh, this was considered to play in this position uh, g3 but maybe this position this is too solid black can play b4 rook c4 queen bishop d5 rook c5 and a4 take take and uh, the structural weaknesses on on the king side here are not relevant in this position because black have very active pieces and I think uh, black can 
easily equalize here. So g4 was played, no active move, b4, and now an interesting idea, g5. So white wants to play rook f6 and close the queen, cut the queen out of the game, basically. Uh, the position is if you take on c3, queen takes c3, pawn takes, of course this important pawn falls. So e6 is hanging that on some moment after bishop c2, h7 is hanging that I have, I think that uh, black have real troubles to equalize this position, I think just bad. Um, another option was played in the game, b takes c3, which is good, but maybe the most exact move was um, to play bishop d5 at once here, rook f6 and now rook c8. So rook c3 is threatening, for instance, if we take on d5, rook c3, black is just winning. And uh, so bishop c2 is necessary uh, to play this, queen e5, rook h3, that's not the only move, but something, all the variation happens, something like this. Now queen b a check, and this is just a perpetual, if you take on f6, for instance, take, take, and perpetual check. Um, so maybe bishop d5 was a little bit better, but what Levon did was quite okay as well, of course. Uh, b takes c3, bishop c2 first, um, bishop d5, rook f6, so white played this rook f6, cutting the queen out, threatening in some moment playing rook h6 and taking this pawn on h7, and also whites want to take on c3, get the pawn back and trying to control this diagonal. So many ideas, very good move. Queen f8 is threatening with deadly queen a3 check. Mating, almost mating the white in this position. But queen c3 of course. And that seems that white get an advantage. So rook is very, looks very strong on f6, this diagonal now. Uh, I threatening with discovery check, but uh, black is just in time with a contra play. But our, uh, Levon needed to see, of course, what will happen if white takes on f7 here. So discovery check, black takes the queen, take, take. Now the problem is that bishop e4 is threatening and white need to take this square under control, so with rook f4. Now bishop a2 would be a bad idea, after king b2, rook moves somewhere, let's say to c7, just take to h7 and uh, later a2 is in, I think it's very good chances for white to win this position. But instead of taking on a2, black can play e5, trying to push this rook from the force, chase this rook from the fourth rank, um, rook a4, now bishop c6, the same idea again, now if I take on e5, then bishop e5 is coming, and bishop on c2 is falling, so rook g4, bishop d7 again, with idea bishop f5, but now rook g3, so white wins the tempo, but after rook c4, and this f5, bishop f5 is hanging, and this pawn is hanging, so white need to play with the king to b2, rook to h4, rook c3. There are so, still some active ideas for white here. So black need, need to do some, make some uh, exact moves. So king f7, just logical move, bring the king closer. And after this, this, it seems to be that white cannot uh, keep all the pawns alive and it will be just a draw in this position. So Magnus decided in this position to play queen d3 and not rook f7. Okay, and threatening might n1, queen g7 of course. King did, uh, f4, he played f4 in this position with the idea h5 and h6. Uh, chasing the queen from g7 after which it will be just one because you cannot go to f8 and h7 Mate is threatening if you go to g8 and uh, queen to d4 and this diagonal will be decisive. Uh, black plays very good move, prophylactic move king g8. 
um, with the idea that if you play h5, f6 is coming, h6 is coming. Now you cannot take here because um, just losing the rook, but also rook h6 uh, could be problematic because of this check. And um, it seems to be a draw in this position. I don't know exactly how, but I think, I guess that you can take on c2. And with this rook out of the game and very strong bishop on d5, it must be uh, some kind of perpetual in this position. That's why Magnus played king d2 first, going out of this check on a1. And uh, yeah, the Leon played this tricky h6 move anyway. Uh, this is a really interesting position because first is uh, the first side is not so clear why uh, the white cannot take with the pawn on h6. But here comes the fantastic blow, f5. Now you cannot take Anpasan because you just lost the rook and. Uh, Bishop e4 is threatening to win this uh, bishop on c2 and queen is coming and all of a sudden all uh, black pieces are so active and this rook doing nothing here that why is just losing in this position. Uh, it would be really sad if he would lose this position but Magnus will be not Magnus if he will blunder such a moves. So he decided to play a3, just a waiting move. Also with some idea going uh, out of the attack with the pawn, so a2 will not hang anymore. And then some variations if black wants to bring the king to uh, queen to b4, it's not possible anymore because now the black b4, uh, the field b4 is under control. So he took on g5, f takes g5, rook c4, attacks this pawn, queen g3. And now queen b8 is threatening, so bishop e4 protecting this diagonal, bishop b3, rook d4 check. And now actually there are the white who have to be careful in this position not to get in the worst position. I think the king e1 is the only move, all other moves are worse for white, which is really strange. So white was pushing all the game and all of a sudden if you made one mistake, uh, not blundering anything, all of a sudden you are worse. But uh, Magnus made the right move. King e1, bishop f5, stabilize this position so this bunch of pieces will not uh, hang after some queen e5 or queen e3 move. And uh, now white have to play careful in this position, otherwise uh, he will get in trouble. So h5 is the right move. And after rook d3, double attacking. Queen b8, queen f8. I was considering a little bit uh, during the game that maybe Magnus will try something keeping the queens on board. But after queen b7, rook e3 check this and rook h3. All of a sudden everything is hanging and uh, is threatening queen d6 or queen d8. Check and mate or h5 is hanging so it maybe it's not lost for white but it's really dangerous. So Magnus decided to trade the queens which forces the draw basically. So after rook c2, I think rook h3 is like logical move. It was my suggestion as well, but uh, also rook a3 is a draw. It looks really dangerous in this position after take take and uh, g6. So creating double pass pawns, but uh, it seems that after rook h5, rook f7, king g8, Rook h7 or rook f5 is still be a draw because after a4 it's not so clear uh, how white can make progress because you cannot push the pawns just without a king and uh, you cannot win this a4 pawn without giving the h pawn uh, so it's just a draw in this position but I think uh, rook h3 just more human not allowing uh, white to get this uh, two pass pounds. So in the game came this, this. So h5 is hanging this way, h6. And now just going 
out of this pin so g6 is not a threat anymore h4 a4 rook h4 this take king f2 yeah i'm just an easy draw in this position so if white takes on a5 it will be f6 trading the last pounds and yeah so they repeated moves in this position just a draw okay thank you for watching i hope uh, you enjoyed my analysis and i hope to see you tomorrow by the left comment last uh, by the live commentary of the 10th round of this tournament thank you very much and bye bye